I really love this song. That's a keeper. Day 23 of my 30 day creative challenge. Beautiful song. And I'm here today, day 23, to talk a little bit about law of, um, law of modeling and its importance in pricing our products. I have three kinds of pricing strategies that I've used that work really well and I wanted to share the basic pricing point. We all know that we need to know who our audience, who the audience or the target market is. That's, that can't be found out unless you are actively talking to a lot of people, engaged with people, communicating, asking them questions. And where else is better to do this than at conferences and at events and trade shows? Trade shows give us the novelty of um, being ourselves. And of course, what I'm going to do is, like I said, share a little bit with you. And hopefully, excuse me, hopefully this will, will be something that's been helpful for you while I am spending some time with you today. So, the law of modeling. Most people who decide to grow personally find their first mentors in the pages of books. Um, I can't say that was really true when I discovered John Maxwell and I discovered Brene Brown. Okay, Brene Brown, I read her book, so I aspire in that lady. She is so, so, she's built of steel, like she's forged steel to be where she's at. And John Maxwell, for me, well, the living example be one minute with Maxwell. I did not know that that one video I watched in my office titled Creativity was going to change my business life, my personal life in a 360 degree transition over the next year and a half. Kid you not. So when we're looking at a mentor or someone who is is going we're looking at coaching mentoring a good mentor is a worthy example remember this is law of modeling so they portray a good example so I wanted to increase my engagement with people communication and revenue in my business I am an entrepreneur I operate my home-based business. I cannot tell you that it's small because the ideas that I have are fairly large. And how do I get from here, from table quality stuff, to here, to hiring staff, to managing editors, and that kind of thing. So there was a dream that initially started out big, but in order to to get started I need someone to model that for me and especially someone that I could trust and knew they could demonstrate how to do the things that I wanted to do in my business I wanted someone who showed me the results someone who knew business really well and I found him in mentorship and as a coach Paul Martinelli and I have followed and been mentored by not only him on, on staff but a few others and I just want to say that it's so important when we're following someone and we choose someone that we don't have a plethora of a plethora of uh, teachers when I was younger I would just pile them on I was listening to about six people six people with very six different streams of thought and um, what I would say is I've got uh, mental and emotional indigestion because I was trying to make it all fit and it didn't fit I'm, I needed to focus on just the one it's just the last three years that I realized that 
focusing on one voice is very important. That one voice who could take you through the sales and marketing, increasing your re revenue, and we're in the self-growth industry, we need to grow ourselves. If we're not aware of some of the characteristics that we have, like we get in our own way. I get in my own way. Now with Paul, he is number one coach in North America. And he was, last year, he got an international award. And his, his beautiful sweet spot is in mindset, limiting self-beliefs. And until I've taken myself through some of those thoughts that have kept me stuck, I had no idea, none whatsoever, exactly what it would be like to have an empowered life. Success today, I know and breathe an empowered life. And when something trips me up, I, I can, I, I change it. Whether it's being flooded with a lot of negativity or trying a new way of selling my product. Finding a different way to communicate, making it fun and interactive. So the product... Paul was the product, and he is very serious about growth, as I am. The expert, there's a story about an expert, and here's an example of um, modeling for you. So this company, they phone in, the, they call in this expert, and he's a manu manufacturing expert. So the guy, he wanders around looking at the machinery because the machinery just automatically shut down and they weren't sure why it shut down. It was stuck. And so this expert, manufacturing um, engineering expert, came in and he wandered around for quite a few minutes. And all of a sudden he looked in a, in a space and then he dug in his tools, he picked up a hammer, and he, he tapped on the machinery and woof, all of a sudden the machine, machinery started. It started. Good go. And then he packed up his stuff and he left. He sent the, um, the, the organization or the company a bill. And the bill was, was really high and, and the, um, the, uh, the guy who hired the boss who hired this expert, picked up the phone and called this man and said, why are your prices so high? All you did was you tapped the machinery. And he said, did you look at the invoice? And so the, the guy, the, um, the, uh, um, the boss or whatever, he looks, he, the one who hired the expert, looks at the invoice and sees. Wisdom. Okay, so this is wisdom. One dollar for tapping on the equipment with hammer. $999 to know where to tap. That's wisdom. And that's value. And a lot of times, when we are creative people, we forget our own our personal value. We cannot sell a product until we know our own personal value. The value lies within the time that we spend creating and it's really hard. A lot of us have difficulty pricing. Putting a price tag which is a number or a label on our art pieces or on our services and with that, you see, in modeling, self-evaluation is really good. And we have something called a business system. It's a system that I use within the arts. Yes, I have a system. Educators have a system. Educators call it rubrics. But in a business, business um, capacity, I call it quality control. It's a business standard. 
and I'd adhere to the business standard. It's sort of bred into, it's, it's inside of me to know that not only do I recognize my personal qualities in creating the item, but the value that goes into it, which is my time, my resources are also valuable. And most people do not like to hear when, uh, when mentioning workshops, here's a pricing point in workshops. A lot of the times, did you know that the preparation work for a small workshop isn't considered unless you include it? I didn't, I did not, could not fathom or wasn't aware that I was giving away my organizational preparation time away. And I would end up exhausted at the end of the day and thinking that what I did was I, I went from a job that I, I once loved, it was my dream job, to create my reality, which was a dream job, but recreated something I didn't like. And so this is like an, a, a review of business standards. And how I do it is through my audience, through the people I talk to. And it would start off with various questions like, so what's your favorite color? Do you, what do you do with this? Or they'll ask me, so what do you do with this? Or how do you, why is this small doll all dressed up? Could you tell me the story? So are the colors related to anything? And then I start to collect ideas and when they leave, I jot them down because those questions are related to interest. And at the end of every trade show, I count how many times I engaged in conversations, the number of people that came to the table, whether they signed the book or not, what their interests were and what they bought and um, their pricing limits. Okay, so now what I want to do is take you on over to the jewelry box pricing quality, okay, quality control. Did you know, and this is the easiest, it was the easiest thing for me to learn or remember, not to learn because it's been a, a, a journey. When we're talking about modeling, there's a pricing structure, there's a system, the quality control that I conduct on my products and my time and my value are what I call a quality control standard. And I would like to, I'm going to pop up, I'm going to show you, I'm trying to figure out, I'm going to pop up three pricing strategies from low, medium and high. And that was my question. Did you know that there's a pricing strategy related to low, medium and high market. A lot of us go straight to the high market or we're stuck in the low market. And I was either or for a long time until I went and I, I just filled my calendar up with trade shows and I learned this, the pricing strategy and how it worked by doing it. By putting prices on my product by talking to my customers and listening to my mentors who know a lot about how to sell and when to sell. Upsell and marketing. So here we go. I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you the boxes, box and then I'm going to bring up, uh, let's see now, I'm going to bring up, pa -pa -pa. Okay. Okay, so here's the jewelry box example. And I have three examples here. These prices are not for you to copy. These are from my own experimentation. And um, it also has a lot to do with influence. We need to generate influence with the people that we work with. And what that means is they have to be able to know, like, and trust you. So through the last three years, I've been able to do that with, my, with the people who um, aspire to purchase my high-end 
art, but don't really have room on their, their walls, but they want something to take away with them. This is only one form that I sell, enjoy selling, but I cannot, and it's all hand done, and that's the other thing about quality control here, it's hand done, which makes the value of the item go up. But here's your quality standards that I go by. And um, if you have any comments, you can drop them down in the feed. And I will get to them after the presentation. Those comments would be related to uh, interest maybe in a further exploration with me about selling your art. Okay. So... The jewelry box that I'm going to sh show you is, one is a, um, an acrylic piping with the type of Zentangle. Another one is with the bold design and it's actually wood burned. And the other one is high. It could either be wood burning or paint of, of, of a painting, right? And then I'm going to just pop this down for a minute because I want to show you what I'm talking about. Okay. This is probably take it's a low end for me. And low end is approximately $25. Now I probably spent more time than I care to... Um, I was exploring design and it's called acrylic piping. It's somewhat like henna. And it's design. It's basically a simple design. And by for me, when I look, it's very relaxed. It's a fun, it's a fun box. The sides have been done. Okay. Oops. This is where my dolls are stored. That's another, another whole different lesson. And then inside, I've painted it. Okay? And the bottom has fabric. The reason why it's in low are because the people who buy it generally can make one of these at home. And probably um, some of the comments I've got would love me to teach this. So my small group of people... I may want to teach or have taught and some just enjoy picking it up and looking at it and the ones that have bought it just needed something now as a gift for a birthday or anniversary or whatnot so that's number one this is low a low ticketed item product that I sell and it's possibly taken me a few hours, a couple hours to finish. The quality standards that I would, that I have for this box. At this time, at low, but I've, I've put polymer on here to coat the acrylic so it doesn't chip. But normally I don't cover the box with anything. I do the design and it's sold as is and the inside is painted. The design is even and consistent. The, the piping is raised. The rhinestones are attached. They're not loose. The, the, it's been sanded. So when your eyes look at this box, it's, it's worthy of a sale. It's not it's not broken, it's not, it looks brand new, and it's all hand done. The second one I want to talk about is medium, is the medium market. And the medium market for this one, and I will get to why I call it the medium market, are, it's wood burning, it's simple, it's still more of a high-end wood burning. Now, if I had wood burning, uh, just plain wood, with a resin pour on top and a polymer on the side, this would be a high-end one. 
but this one isn't it's medium and even in consistent design bold lines finished product all sides the it's uh, meant to be watercolored type light on the inside it's appeasing the white the walls have been white the edges have been sanded and painted there's a bottom there's an insert now I want to talk a little bit about the jewelry box here this is more of a high-end product with this many features however it's a steal of a deal for someone who's looking for something for their daughter or their wife or their niece and um, it's really well done the walls move if you wish your uh, earrings can be can be raised or whatnot lifted out and um, put back in there's no cracks or fissures it's been sanded quality control standards at their best I and the time that I spend with this can be anywhere from three to four hours if not more and I'll tell you about the pricing in a minute oops this is a resin the top the top is a is been I'm just moving this lamp has been resin poured and it's even and consistent which is if some of you have done done and I'm trying to get rid of the light if some of you have done resin pours you're going to know that for even consistency there is about a level one eighth of an inch and I don't know I'm trying to find a corner where you could see it one eighth of an inch and that it's also been sanded and to get the painting to stand out this well even in consistent resin pour the painting is complementary the lines the paint this is sanded polymer coated on the side and inside I offer a cup with uh, tea and whatnot it's plain because of the time it took to do the front top and anything with the resin pour is a bit more expensive because resin will run anywhere from five to seven dollars Canadian dollars just for a quarter of a cup of resin on the top it's not cheap and so what I do is I get a series of boxes poured I do a pour set them up and do six at a time so that I'm ensuring that my resin doesn't go to waste okay so everything about this box follows quality control like I said polymer it's sanded there's no smudge marks um, the inside looks good the the top it shuts the hinges work let's revisit so the jewelry box, the first one I showed you was low. The one with the tree, with the bold designs, and the raised acrylic piping. It was painted to have fabric inlay. Hang on here. Okay, low. You look at the low and look down. The one to one to it should have said one to two hours. No splotches. Evenly sanded and appeasing acrylic piping anywhere around $25 is what I price it at bold designs fat with fabric inlay and painted 
coated with it all the way around with acrylic polymer that's even consistent not splotchy bold designs that stand out all these things anywhere from 40 to 50 dollars and a high-end one from 55 to 75 dollars i've always discovered that when you do details like um, fine wood born wood burning and painting on the inside fabric inlay that would probably take anywhere from three to four hours. I'm approximately because there's a, the acrylic, the time it takes to pour the resin. And that resin is really important because if it's um, too thick on one side and too thin on the other side, it doesn't look right. If it's full of bubbles, ah, uh, then it's good for like a giveaway or you can add, make stars with it, you know, put glue stars on where the bubbles are. But that's, that's the pricing that um, I wanted to share with you. Okay, I'm trying to get rid of that. Okay, okay I'm going to come up back to... One more. While I was uh, talking about popsicle sticks yesterday when I talked a little bit about the, um, the, final, the final look of the box, which you just saw now, the inlay, everything is, is ready to go and ready to sell. I mentioned popsicle sticks. Oh, when we talk about, I'm um, trying to move this, okay. When we talk about, I'll just go like this. When we talk about popsicle sticks and art, the low art created on a popsicle stick, ideas around maybe just a, a glue painting, maybe gluing the eyes and making a little hats and um, maybe a couple of um, black felt shoes, which would be your, your Santa Claus. Only, per, only thing to remember is that all areas are tacked firmly, so the eyes stay on, the feet stay on, that kind of thing. And that the surface of the pop, popsicle stick uh, isn't raised, like it has splint, give your uh, customer a splinter. And that um, you make plenty of this. Uh, there are approximately, I've got a bag here. popsicle sticks from the dollar store. I paid a buck. Uh, the, I think there's like 250 popsicle sticks. And so what I do is I divide these up in half and I lay them out and I go into mass production. But the mass production is in thought with my customer because the first one with just the eyes and the hat or whatnot, I give away. Free. So the low the low, now don't, don't get me wrong here because the low is the most important part of what we do when, when we're selling an item. Low is important because otherwise there's no conversation at the table. People walk by. Have you ever been at a table and um, you're reading a book and you look up and people will be looking at your table but then they see you and they go, oh, and they take off? Guess books sometimes work, but if it's not in, if the table doesn't have anything for them, and I'm not doing this as a trap, what I do is I'm genuinely interested in having a conversation. It's great for me to exercise my communication skills and find out what they really want or just ask them about their day. And so I am talking all day long. A lot of the people that I talk to end up coming back later on the day because. Remember, the first day is usually exploring all the different tables or the conference event or what's going on, the various speakers, and um, they come for the giveaway or they come for whatever they're looking at at your table towards the end of or the middle of the event. And not only that, is they've, they've looked at something on your table and they want it. So low low market you gotta do low market that's all there is to it because it'll give you an experience of communication that you wouldn't get nowhere 
in, in any course that's available to you because we need to expand our field of communication by connecting with people. Okay, the next one is number two. So you take that popsicle stick and it's fully decorated and on one side you put an affirmation. Laying all your popsicle sticks out, it might take you maybe five minutes per popsicle stick. So this is kind of like the thing that you would do over a weekend. I charge two dollars for a popsicle stick. Um, it's kind of like what my kids would call, they called it chump change. Everybody's got a toonie. And um, when they look at that, it's, it's, it's like, oh, first they notice the giveaway, but then they notice the difference. You have to show the difference. Oh, this is that. And, and so, no, this is an affirmation to, as a special gift to you, to read every morning or put up on your fridge. You could put magnets on it. And people just, just love that. So the third one is a specialized popsicle stick. And it would have wood burning or fine scroll work. It takes you probably 10 to 15 minutes to create. What I really like about popsicle sticks is that um, you can dress them up culturally. So you could have an African lady or an African man, an indigenous dancer or you know, or a um, Spanish singer or, and the, the, the quality control on all of these are even in consistent design, appeasing colors that catch the eyes, the high-end ones you would sand them, uh, glue splotches where you put the clothing are removed and ideally a lot of the clothing that are made put on popsicle sticks at a high end are actually sewn believe it or not I've seen this and they run anywhere from four dollars you see the gradual increase in pricing it just can't go wrong and and it's affordable for the market you have the low, medium, and high in one product, and you move to the next product. As an, as an educating artist, it is so important to share history and stories about the certain colors, about the lines we use, the symbols interpretation. I can go on. This thing about, this is my art, buy it, doesn't work. Or... I spent 70 hours. Oh, that's beautiful. You'll never get an argument about your art that way. But this pricing isn't just for a visual artist. What I say educating artists is because along with the content that I create, I paint for it. I include games and quizzes. Uh, that's one way to teach others the value that I get from my own growth and the wisdom to share with others so that I can inspire them. Not a, We assume as artists that a lot of people know what the arts is about. They don't. We have to share our excitement and inspiration about it. I've seen artists sitting at a table filing their nails or reading a book. I've stood right in front of them and no recognition of me. And that doesn't sell product. Artwork is product. And yes, we're the marketers. Now this is a hard, this is um, what I call my high-end video in this series, day 23, and I hope that some of the information I shared with you today is helpful if it is please subscribe just click on the button it'll take you to my website and all you need to do is put your email address in when you subscribe you'll get the day lesson and comments like and share
because like and share gets me out to others so they can experience the 30-day creative challenge with us. I've enjoyed just being here today and I look forward to tomorrow, day 24. And um, take care, everyone. Love you all. Mwah.